Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I'm your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today's question comes to us from Zane Dobbins of Huntsville, Alabama, who wonders what's up with the Nicene Creed in the United Methodist Church. Have we gotten rid of it? What's going on? What are we doing with the Nicene Creed? Well, as I responded to Zane when he sent that to me in email as part of my work with InfoServe, with United Methodist Communications, the reality is that Methodists in America uh, and United Methodists more particularly have actually worked to recover the Nicene Creed for use among the people called Methodists and now United Methodists. What do I mean by that? Well, the reality is that John Wesley had actually removed the Nicene Creed from use for the people called Methodists, beginning with the very founding of the Methodist Episcopal Church here in the United States. He did this in two different ways. First, he deleted the article on the creeds from the 39 articles that was not among the collection of 24 articles that he sent for adoption by the 1784 General Conference. That's the one with, that mentions in the Church of England version of the articles, the Apostles Nicene and Athanasian Creed as uh, appropriate ways of expressing the New Testament faith, the, script, the Christian faith, and uh, being both necessary and sufficient to understand what the faith is. Um, so he deleted that. So we didn't have it in our doctrinal standards. We still don't. He then also deleted it from the Sunday service, his edited version of the Book of Common Prayer, where the Nicene Creed had appeared as a response to the sermon in the 1662 prayer book. He continued to have the Apostles' Creed in this resource, the morning and evening prayer, and um, as well as in the interrogatory form of the um, Apostles' Creed as appeared in the baptismal ritual in 1784, but the Nicene Creed was simply absent. And indeed, the Nicene Creed would remain absent from official Methodist hymnals and other worship resources until 1945. In, 1840, in 1944, the Methodist Church approved the uh, Book of Worship, the first Book of Worship for the Methodist Church, and it included in its affirmations of faith for the first time in a Methodist resource, the Nicene Creed as the second of the affirmations of faith available in that resource. Similarly, it appears second in the updated version of the Book of Worship that came out in 1965. And you can see that here. United Methodists um, who were created, of course, as the result of the union of the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren, actually did one better than what we had previously done. No longer would the Nicene Creed be relegated to the Book of Worship. It's actually listed in the hymnal, and now the Nicene Creed is even listed the very first of the affirmations of faith before the Apostles' Creed. So the reality is that all along, Methodists and now United Methodists have been working at recovering the place and role of the Nicene Creed among our worship resources. It can be a valuable thing for us to do, not only for worship, but also in our own understanding of the nature and foundation of Trinitarian Christian theology. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at liturgyfolks.com, through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or drop a line on this page. And perhaps your question or comment might become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. May the peace of Christ be always with you.